Hey there, Becca here from Inside the Square. In this tutorial, I'm going to teach you how to change up the color for the cookie alert in your Squarespace website. We're going to edit the background color, give it a unique border, some box shadow effects, and even play around with some of those buttons creating cool hover effects so the cookie alert will really stand out. Now, as always, the codes I'm about to share are listed in the description below, but let's hop on into my demo site so I can show you how they work. Alrighty, so here we are in my demo site, and the first thing we need to do is to turn on the cookie alert. So I'm gonna to navigate to settings right here, and then I'll select cookies and visitor data. This is where we can turn on the cookie banner. Now you'll see we have a lot of options here. We have banner versus pop-up, and then we have opt-in versus opt-in and out. <laughs> so from there, there are even more options. Let's go ahead and stick with pop-up. This is what bar looks like, by the way, and we can change this to be at the top or the bottom of the page. Pop-up, we can place it in any corner, and then we have opt-in or opt-in and out. Now from there, we can customize it further. I'm gonna click this and it'll ask, do you wanna save? We'll say, yes, we wanna save. And this is where you can change the position, change the theme, which totally up to you, light versus dark. We will be customizing that anyway, so it doesn't matter which one you go with. And then the call to action type. Right now it's set to text, which gives the text with an underline, but I can also change it to button. Either one, totally customizable. Select whichever one is the style that you'd like to go for, closely matches the style you'd like to go for. From there, we can change the text to anything you want it to say and update the disclaimer text to whatever you want it to be. This is where you'd make those edits. Go ahead and select save and let's take a look at the codes we're actually gonna be working with. We're gonna use this code name for the entire cookie alert to give it a custom border, a background, and a box shadow. This code right here, where we've added the letter P, will take care of the text inside there, this disclaimer text. This is the accept option, and this is the deny option. Now, if you have opt-in only, let's go ahead and navigate back here. If you have opt-in only, we only have the accept option, so don't worry about deny, okay? But leave it at opt-in and opt-out just so I can show you what it looks like. But if you're just going for opt-in, just focus on accept, you'll be good to go. All right, here's some of the codes that I wanna talk about. One of the first ones is changing the button colors. So decline will be a red button and accept will be a green button. All of our codes are custom CSS. So I'm gonna select save and navigate out of here. And from our main menu, let's select design and then scroll all the way down to custom CSS. Now, as always, these codes are listed in the description below, but let's go ahead and type them in here so we can see what they look like. Starting with this first set right here, I've said make the accept button have a green background color. Now I've added exclamation point important because we're overriding the style settings here. If I remove that, you'll see it doesn't change anything. So we need to say exclamation point important so it's green. And the decline button is now red. Now what if we just want to see those colors on a hover? All we have to do is add the text hover. Oops, not in capital letters. I mean, all we have to do is add the text hover after accept and deny and there we go check it out now when i hover over those buttons they'll change colors we can also round these buttons if we want to by adding a border radius this will just add a border radius to both of them we'll get rid of those colors and just give it a curve there so now they're a rounded shape you can change this 20 px to maybe five if you just want like a slight curve at the edges there uh, change it to 15 play around with that number until it looks exactly the way you want it to now what about giving it a box shadow so it stands out from the page itself? For that, we're gonna say, take this entire cookie banner and give it this box shadow. I'm gonna copy this code and paste it right here, and now it kind of pops off the page. It pops off the page a lot. Let's change the color of that box shadow. There we go, now it's a little bit more subtle. So these box shadows can be negative or positive values. These run horizontal axis vertical access and spread. So let's say 15 by 10 by 15. 15 pixels to the right, 10 pixels lower, and 15 pixels of a spread in that solid color. You can make this uh, the color purple if you want to. Anything you want to help it stand out a little bit more, that's how you add the box shadow. Now I realized in the beginning, I actually said we were gonna give it a border and a background too, and we haven't done that yet. Let's go ahead and add that code right now. I'll say border, let's go 5px, dotted pink. Oops, I put a space there. There we go, put that value next to PX. And now we have a funky little pink border for it. Let's give it a background. We can say background, um, how about green? Exclamation point, important. 
And there we go. Now it's green with a dotted pink border, which might not be a good style to go with, but I just wanted to show you what those options look like. Please customize this so it looks better on your own website and matches the color scheme you're going for or the style you're going for. If this is it, more power to you. You enjoy that. Uh, we can also add that same kind of border concept to our accept and deny buttons as well. Let's say we replace SQS cookie banner v2 with the accept option. And now if we add exclamation point important spelled correctly to that border, there we go. Now we'll have the dotted pink border around the green accept button. Again, those borders and backgrounds can be applied to any of these options here. Okay, so let's keep going. So a few more. Uh, yes, inset shadow. I was excited about this one. So for this one right here, I'm going to paste the code. We've given it an inset shadow, and I changed the background to solid white, so it definitely will stand out against the page, but the text is gone, so we need to change that too. We can use this code right here with the asterisk to grab the accept and decline buttons as well. If we change it just to the letter P, all it will affect is the actual text inside there for the disclaimer, so we're going to want to change the buttons as well. Let's go ahead and grab the code that covers both of those. There it is. Let's grab this one right here and we'll just add a comma after the letter P and give it its own color if we want to, or you can use the CSS catch-all of the asterisk to grab all the text that's inside that element and change the color of it there. Oops, didn't mean to scroll past. There we go. So we've said give us an inset box shadow that's this light gray, give it a solid background of just the solid color white and change the text to a solid color black and we're good to go. Now uh, let's get a little creative here. I'm going to go ahead and grab the accept option and let's make that border color red. I'm going to open up a curly bracket and say border color red exclamation point important and there we go. Uh, it's accept so just kidding let's make it green. There we go. <laughs> now let's do the same for the deny option. I'm going to grab that one and we'll say border color red exclamation point important there we go, and now decline is red, except is green, but it's that inset box shadow. Pretty interesting, right? All right, so then last but not least, I had raised buttons on a hover. I thought this one looked pretty cool. So I'm just gonna grab this whole code right here, which is underneath the video in the description. I'll paste it right there. So this code gives us the inset shadow with lifted buttons that look like they're on the same level as the rest of the site, just a little visual trickery for you, but when you hover over those buttons, they'll look like they're slightly pushed down. So I thought that looked kind of neat, but totally customizable. You set it up to the way that you want it to be. Again, all of these fun codes are listed in the description below, lots of different options. So now that we've applied this, I'm going to select save, and I'd love to show you if we hop back out of here and go all the way down to settings and cookies and visitor data. If we change this to a bar and change it to just opt in and select save, even customize it and move it to, uh, let's say, the top of the site, all of those codes, let me scroll up here so we can see it, all of those codes are still applying. It still works exactly the same. Even if we choose the light color theme or the dark color theme, or if we say text instead of button, we're still going to see all of the same magic using those custom CSS codes. So don't worry too much about what these settings are. All of that is customizable with the codes that are listed in the description beneath this video. Just make sure you select save on your cookies and visitor data option and make sure you add the code to design custom CSS. And after you've customized it, make sure you select save here as well and you'll be good to go. Alrighty, that's it for this tutorial. Again, the codes I just shared with you are all listed in the description below. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned something awesome. And most importantly, have fun with your Squarespace website. Bye for now. If you liked this tutorial, you'll love my CSS cheat sheet. I put all of my pro tips and custom codes specifically for Squarespace into one PDF, and you can download a copy right now at insidethesquare.co forward slash CSS. That's insidethesquare.co forward slash CSS.